Tony, his exact trade strategy out wider than Kennedy. Obviously one of the most creative and important ad agencies in town. He's going to give us 20 tips from 20 years. Please don't forget to ask questions on your app or your mobile phone and I will get some of the best after Tony's talk if we have time. So I think no one cares about me so we'll move straight on to the start of this afternoon's opening session. Tony, over to you. Thank you so much and don't forget to ask questions everyone. Oh, so I don't have to go on this. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, I'm uh, Tony. I'm quite famous, anybody from Widening Kennedy, for uh, over-talking for a long period of time and meetings running on, as Lara here would have known. Um, so I've actually done this a bit like a Petra Kucha. It's going to be 20 minutes back to back, and I'm going to try and talk in between it. Uh, and it's just 20 tips I've learned. I'm now unemployed, uh, but this is what I learned at Widening Kennedy. Sound. Oh, it's on. This week at number 20, it's walking stupid. I think uh, one of the things that we've always uh, wondered about is when you think you know what you're doing and you presume you know the answers, uh, it never ever works because actually the answers are probably hidden somewhere in the brand you don't know about. So to remind everybody, we built this blender man in reception in a suit. He has a blender for a head and a suitcase that says walking stupid. Uh, and so, you know, often it's the, sometimes it's being the dumbest man in the room and being the naive person to come up with the things rather than always thinking you know it. So it's just a reminder to everyone in the office. What's funny was when we first did this, East End was very different and city people didn't really come down our street. But when they did, they saw one of these with walking stupid on our, think it through them a bit. So that's walking stupid. Don't presume you know everything. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed that. Down five at number 19, it's Higher Wrong. Dan Wyden, when he started in Portland, nobody wanted to work for him in an office in Portland, and he had to hire a load of misfits. I thought I'd do the same in London. Uh, David Bruno, Tom Seymour were product designers. I really liked them. They did a couple of things I'd seen. They did a post-it note desk, giant post-it note desk, and a paper clip lampshade. Both brilliant conceptual ideas. They came and joined us, did some really good work before moving on to Google Labs, where they did great creative work as well. Also, these two, Laurie Howell and Toby Trayer Evans, they came. I hired, uh, they are now ECDs in Droga 5. They won a DNA D black pencil for the recent New York Times work. And I hired them because they did these beer mats for Hackney Brewery during the Olympics, where you flip and they've got a little axe. They were beautifully crafted. So, high wrong. Don't just hire from the same fish. Pop pond of creative people. And you enter at number 18, it's Don't Just Make Ads. So I've always believed the most creative people are not interested in just making ads. So as a rule, we made lots of stuff. Yes, Dan Wyden did actually enjoy making this musical ruler, which you can actually play on a desktop. So it's cute. We also made this missing pieces jigsaw puzzle. I have no idea, it was just fun. Uh, we also made bin liners, just to encourage people to shop at Christmas, you know, put their Christmas stuff away. All of this stuff made us small amounts of money, but it wasn't about the money. It was about the culture and people having fun. We also, there was a planner who came to us who wanted to make a jewellery uh, set on the stock share price, so silver and gold price. Uh, so we helped her with that. Uh, we also made these um, arse vases for Positive East for HIV. Um, what else did we make? Oh, and even when we have widenisms like this, we always try and make them and stick them on the wall rather than just stick them in a dock. So, music, you know, make stuff. Now then, rising to number 17, it's fine to voices. Dan Wyden uh, always said that Nike didn't discover the power of advertising, they discovered the power of their own voice. I think the same thing of true was widening Kenley London and Honda. We saw this article, which was a rare interview in Life magazine. People thought Honda was boring and dull, but when we dug deep, 
and we found out about his incredible dream to make Japan mobile and then the world. Uh, mobility for the masses, an amazing engineering company with a huge background, just totally misunderstood. The more and more we dug, the more we just loved it. You know, we started uh, calling them warm engineering. They asked us lots of questions, so our work had lots of questions in it. And the more closer you get to a brand, the more you love it, that's when you'll do your best work. You know, people often ask to me, you know, do you believe in the power of dreams? And I totally do. If you've never driven a Honda, drive a Honda. Coming up next, why? It's 16, escape the bubble. So uh, I used to work in Soho for many years, uh, uh, and the office was originally in NoHo, and I was really worried that I was just hanging out with advertising people in a bubble, which is not interesting. So we moved the office east, partly because my flat was east as well. Uh, and uh, we, we met this woman who runs the Golden Heart. If you don't know her, her name's Sandra Eskert. She's been there for 40 years. She was voted in the top most 50 influential people in the art world. She's best mates with Tracy Emin, Gilbert and George, and a host of other artists. Um, Kate Moss she used to work in our bar. She's been to dinner at number 10. She's an incredibly influential people. You just have to go out and meet other people. Stop hanging out with the people you know. Stop hanging out, honestly. It's much more interesting when you get to know diverse people. She's now 76, she's got a terrible hip and she still does this. She's absolutely yeah, nuts and wonderful. In the charts, it's Stay Foolish. So Stay Foolish, Pablo Picasso said, remain a child. Uh, there was a creative, Matt Gooden, who said, you're mad, you should build a padded cell. So I built a padded cell in the office. It's just been destroyed because I'm leaving. But it was a good thing to do because it made people go, he's crazy. We changed the electric wiring to confuse the, the electrician into the numbers of the floors. So he didn't know what, it, you know, it was just like, why? Just because it's foolish to do. We scanned everybody's heads recently so we could turn them into video games. We have a video console in reception that we've hacked and you can now play video games of different people's heads. My kids came in, thought it was really funny. Uh, you know, just again, just... It's just foolish. The most foolish thing I probably ever did was pitch the eighth wonder of the world at a Google Zeitgeist lecture. A giant sundial. Um, it was the most uh, sustainable building in the world, three times the size of any building. When you walked up the edge, it captured your feet, and when you flew in, you could tell the time into Abu Dhabi. Uh, the Prince of Norway liked it. Oh, amazing. I just can't get enough of that. But anyway, now let's move on to number 14. It's shop window. So my only request when I move east was, can we have a shop window in the building? Because I want to do projects. This was nude Russian dolls. We sent them all out to artists. They sent them back. And then we sold them for charity in the area. We also had this woman come and weave this Honda bike, sat in the window and weave it and crochet it. A rat race was a load of tubes, some like thing with live rats in. You know, and we had Facebook pages for all the rats. A chocolate coin factory where you could put a pound in and get a chocolate coin out the side with Dan and Dave's heads on. Uh, we also have a maker's window. Kira Coronel was a milliner. He's, he did his hats in it. Wilf, Wilfred Wood made his plaster scene heads of everybody in the office. He's in there. And cool shit make huge, giant, inflatable things. Sometimes so big, they can't even fit in the office and they end up out on the street. Boom. Next. Come on. Let's do this. Because you didn't realise Liverpool just won a trophy, but this is a more serious number. And number 13, beware the trophy hunters. Our industry is obsessed with awards. I was obsessed with awards. They get you wage rises and stuff. But actually, the danger is there's too many people just making stuff for awards and not thinking about their clients. And it makes us look stupid as an industry. So we had a uh, advertising awards amnesty at the office. Everybody gave their awards in, and we had an artist. Uh, make Ben Hughes make this statue in the, the San, figure of San Sebastian uh, with at the bottom it says beware the trophy hunter because I'm not interested in hiring people who just want to win awards you know the best work is the stuff that genuinely gets into culture real culture real people and they're talking about it and sharing it and that really really good stuff is normally the stuff that wins the awards as well so beware of the trophy hunters Wow, that one went on. No hanging around now. <laughs> Let's go straight to number 12, Embrace Community. Okay, Dan Wyden said to me that a third of the DNA of an office should be the community you're in. 
Uh, instead of putting a massive no parking sign up when we went moved to our office, we made these parking signs, which made people like us. And sort of, you know, the community talked with us and said, oh, you're a creative company. Cheryl Rogers was one of our best staff. She sadly passed away. We walk every year and do an auction every year to earn money for the Hackney Hospice that looked after her so well. This year, my hair was the chief prize, raised over £10,000, shaved live on Zoom. We've made over 140,000. Uh, Black Mums Up Front is an organisation close to our hearts working. We did a rebrand fresh for them. And Gilbert and George helped us with the Canvas Cafe around the corner by making these plates that sell. They give food away to people who can't afford meals. So, you know, do oh, something in your community. Mr. Anyway, highest new entry at 11, give your staff away. So many people have been in companies where they try and protect the best staff. They pay them more money. I actually try and get rid of them. I think it's quite interesting that like people grow up and need change. And actually sending some of our best people around the world to our offices in New York, Portland, Shanghai, Delhi, Sao Paulo, you know, it helps them grow and it also helps those companies. It also forces you to retrain, redo young people and change the company. So it's a really good thing. Uh, this is Corel Dixon going there. He ended up MD of Portland office. And Kim Patworth, my old partner, is coming up here. Even he went and did three global offices for a while. So, you know, give all your best people away. And let them grow. The highest new entry at number 10, soon to live back down. So I was lucky. I fell into creativity by a mistake. This industry is appalling at letting people what knows what it does. So a PA of mine, old PA, said, I'd like to do something with local schools in the area because a lot of young kids don't get near creativity. The Forever Curious program has been running for six, seven years now. It's great. We learn as much from them as they learn from us. Uh, we also started a school back in the day, ages ago, WK side, four people, nothing to do with advertising. The third person, Sophie there, is now a creative director of the agency. We won Nokia, we changed it to platform, we had 18 people from all over the world. It was completely crazy, I'm not sure it worked, but it was fun. Then we came more recently, we've aligned with all the offices to do the Kennedys, which is a program that helps people who haven't got a chance getting into advertising to undecide their true creative potential. It's an experiment. Some of them have joined us and worked with us. Others are doing amazing creative things elsewhere, and I like that. Number nine record. Debbie, are you any good at making soup? I'm quite good at tomato. Yeah, it's all about getting the right blend, isn't it? Of course. Get good at making soup, is it? Number nine. So the right blend of people on the right project is really important. I think it's really easy to make tomato soup every day. You just put a copywriter with an art director, which is over 50 years old. So actually, it's much more interesting when you start trying some different ingredients. Like on a Formula One brand and comms project, we, uh, took a, you know, we took a cup of a creative director from New York, uh, an outside brand planner, uh, an outside brand uh, producer, some internal designers, some external designers, an outside brand writer. We mixed it all up and we probably did some of the best work of our lives in a very, very short time span, much shorter than a normal design company would do. I recommend doing brand comms and together. You do the design and the comms together, it's worth looking at clients because it probably saves you money and it pulls your brand together more. You're probably wondering why I'm wearing this hat. <laughs> So this is about leading, not following. In the 1960s, uh, these are swipe up films. And in the 1960s, television advertising was culture. People talked about it down the pub. That's no longer the case. So Nike Londoner, everybody goes, oh, what a great TV ad. Rubbish. It was not a good TV ad. It was actually made by the kids. They helped choose the music. They knew what they were doing. They were involved in it. They actually wrote some of the words. It was a big part. They released it in their own way, one bit at a time. They had these swipe up videos were brand new. They hadn't been used before. Nike were the first one to use them and release them that way. By the time the television ad hit all of us though, me and old fart, all the youngsters had already done it, spread it, and were actually booking up all the special sports days they could get free things off the back of it. So go where the puck is going. Lead, don't follow. And don't, you know, treat your audience stupid. They've been around for a while, but they're still as important ever. Standing still at seven, craft still matters. People, uh, people often ask me why I spend so long crafting something that might end up on the back pages of some magazines for a short while. Because it matters. Craft matters. It's like, you know, 
if you're a good writer, you're a really good writer. Everybody can be creative now, but it doesn't give you good taste. A good writer is still a good writer. A good designer is still a good designer. A great filmmaker is still a great filmmaker. And it's called taste, and not everybody has it. And I tell you, I love these fundamentalism things. These were, you know, they're not adverts. They're like editorial. They look amazing. And it takes time to do that. And I think clients and people are going, I haven't got time to do stuff. Well, I go, you know, you wouldn't get work like this if you didn't craft and spend time on it. And, you know, if we hadn't chosen food, film directors instead of food directors and Rudger Hauer for the voiceover of Lurpak, we would never have changed the way people shoot food advertising. So, like... You can't realise how badly dubbed I am, but anyway, here's a new entry at six. Advertising is not art. So, a number of creatives I've worked with over the years think advertising is art. It's not our job. We have a brief to sell, like, products, services, and to make a brand better. However, when somebody like Gillian Waring knocks on your door and says, I'd like to have an advert that's a piece of art about me, we thought, that's interesting. So we uh, got her, she's all about the persona of the real person versus the not. So we made this short film for her using deep fake. It's five minutes long, but this is just a cut down. me alienates me from me. And I really recognize myself. That's why I placed an advert online looking for people who want to be me in this foot. Here are performers selected in casting to be me. They will be wearing a digital mask of my face. I'm wearing one now. That is officially art in the Cincinnati Museum. And here, here we are, one of my favourites now. Up to me to number five, design is not an afterthought. Uh, too many people, in my business anyway, look at design as the after process. I always think it's up front. Andy Smith's illustration massively affected the way this look and feel of Run London campaign was. Uh, Sainsbury's, arguably nobody was remembering their ads, just the Christmas ads. That was because they didn't have a good design system. So we built them one. That's what won the pitch virtually. And their recall's gone up massively. Night, uh, Guardian wanted to just do their values, no copywriting. So design was the solution to rebrand their values using their colours. Uh, Shambord wanted to make cheap social posts. This was a designer and a writer together. And why do social posts have to look shit? If you build a decent system, they don't have to. Formula One, you know, probably our greatest thing. Four different typefaces, and then going, every, going across every little thing. And it's just like design led this whole process. Even made something that you can this next. This should be in everyone's vinyl collection. Yes, up two to number four. Disruption is your friend. So, I have uh, the head of planning in Portland to thank for this, David Terry. Uh, he's no longer the head of planning, but he was. And he said to me one of the nicest compliments that's ever been said. I like to disrupt. Uh, and I, like, when we first took over at Widens, I stopped everybody writing scripts and said, you can stick anything on the wall, but not scripts. I then sat on reception and just uh, was, was the receptionist. I just always, always, whatever you do, just disrupt because we all get in a system. It's all a bloody system and we all copy ourselves and repeat ourselves. So, you know, all I ever want to do is disrupt everything. And I don't think there's enough disruptors in this industry because that's the stuff that normally sticks. Thank you, David. Whew. I had longer on that one, didn't I? Unless we forget our most powerful tool, up 10 places to three, it's gut instinct. So this is something I always talk to clients about. I think like it's very easy in the wind tunnel of testing and everything uh, to sort of just give up on your gut. But often the most important things are the things that are the least important. There is absolutely no reason why a furry yellow puppet in this. It failed in research. Uh, similarly, like, you know, there's no reason for a moonwalking pony, uh, and yet it became three's best advertising. You know, um, it appeared in America on live chat shows, even though it only ran in this country. So I think, and obviously there's a logic to why you would use a man talking to a woman to sell deodorant when women buy the men's deodorant, right? But there's no logic as to why the final line of the commercial would be, I'm on a horse which is probably the most rememberable thing about it. It's been and so, like, years, you know, use your gut. So I could have shown a reel of work, some of which you would have known and stuff, but that's not what interests me, really. What's interested me about Widens is building a culture. It was very ill when I took over. There wasn't really a culture and slowly built it up. 
And it's what I'm most proud of because I think if you get the culture right, you treat people really well. You do fun things together. You help each other if someone's struggling. And I think if you build the right culture, great work comes. Most of the work done in the 20 years there was not done by me. It was done by other people and everybody helping each other. So I owe a massive thanks to them. And I think the culture is probably what I miss most and is what I'm most proud of. So uh, look after the culture of your place. Everything from the building to the people to the whatever you do. Make sure you have fun as well. The one you've been waiting for, still at number one after 39 years, independence is everything. So probably the only reason a lot of those top tips are in the top charts is because this company is independent and remains independent. I remember Dan Wyden talking to us global partners saying, you will never fucking sell this company. And you know, when you look at the Martin Sorrells and all people like that, God bless him, it's like all these companies that sell, they lose something because it's not the original context of why the company was set up. Uh, you know, I like encourage anybody, he's set a trust up so this company can never be sold now. Right, never, not in its lifetime. So if you're creative in any way and want to work at a company, try widening Kennedy because it's not going to sell. And it affects creatives. When you sell to shareholders and make shareholders, it affects the creativity. Boom. I don't think that's all we have time for today. See you next time when I'll be doing something completely different. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much. And, and exactly on time. Well done. Yeah, Beat your record. Before we go, just one quick question. There was one question here from Joe. It's not a question. You just wanted to say, you're brilliant. Love everything you're saying. One question here from Claire I wanted to put to you. It goes back to your thing about everyone being a disruptor. The receptionist, everyone in the company. If everyone's a disruptor, doesn't that devalue the very meaning of the word disruption? Yes. No, I don't, I don't think everybody should be a disruptor. But when you think about, when I think about disruptors, like through my career, whether it was Paul Arden, who was, you know, a big disruptor in Sarches, or Tony Kaye, who keep, completely disrupted the film industry by the way he made film. Uh, I think you just need those mavericks. And I worry that everything's going through the wind tunnel so much. And obviously technology, which is brilliant, by the way, and I love data, I love using it, but it's just... The danger is that you don't, you just don't. So all I say is make sure you've got some disruptors in your company who are like challenging you because, you know, I think that's when we only, we only get places if we make mistakes, if we move forwards, if we're just repeating ourselves. How much of advertising is just like wallpaper? 99.9999%. It's like it's a waste of money. I'm amazed people pay for it. So <laughs> anyway, anyway, thank you so much. Absolutely Thanks. fantastic. Inspirational and loved every second of it.